Hola Chicos, I'll do a quick weekend update here for June 14, 15, 16, something like that. Um, talk about my 100 book challenge and where I'm at, the books I read this week. First of all, most important thing, I want to thank my dear friend Mark of Book Time with Elvis, who made sure I got a copy of The Oxbow Incident, which was my favorite read of the week. I did a video on it. And um, I'm really glad I got to read it. Uh, it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. Very intense. Watch that video. Anyway, I wouldn't have been able to get it, I, I wouldn't think, if uh, Mark didn't help me out. So, Mark, thank you very much. And what should I talk about next? Mostly I did Westerns. Almost all Westerns. I'm looking at my list of what I read this week. The only non-Western I read was for uh, Summer of Sport. I read Mr. Finchley Discovers His England. It's a light comic novel. I did a video about that the other day. If you want to be one of the first 10 people to watch it, you probably need to click on it sometime in the next uh, 2 to 14 months. Um, but Westerns, I continued on from where I left the week before. I read The Oxbow Incident, which I mentioned. I read a book called The History of Billy the Kid, which is nonfiction. I got it on Project Gutenberg. It only reads, takes like an hour or something to read, two hours at the most. Uh, let me see where I put my pictures here. I think I made pictures. Uh, Billy the Kid, the history of Billy the Kid, a cowboy outlaw whose youthful daring has never been equaled in the annals of criminal history by lawman and Pinkerton agent Charles A. Seringo. Interesting guy. He wrote several books about his own adventures as a lawman. So he knew Billy the Kid slightly. His glasses are crooked. And about 40 years after the death of Billy the Kid, he he went back and interviewed some of the people who knew him a little better. Seems to have liked him. Although there's nothing in this book that would lead anyone to like Billy the Kid. Except there's a couple paragraphs where Sringer goes, I met him and I, I found him to be very personable and charming. And, and then later, you know, I supplied some of the deputies to Pat Garrett who, uh, you know, who helped kill him. And God rest his soul. It's kind of a strange book that way because he just does like despicable. Billy the Kid is totally reprehensible. He kills 21 white people and Mexicans. Uh, these the standard. I think it, I don't know if it comes from this. The standard sort of racist uh, description of Billy the Kid is he killed 21 men, not including Indians. That's how they phrased it back then. That's how they phrase it in this book. Killed a lot of people. Uh, Died very young, kept going back to the same town where Pat Garrett was the sheriff because he he had a girlfriend there, couldn't stay away. Um, and yet, uh, you know, it's it's not the best written book. It, it's it's very it's very dry. It gives the facts of Billy the Kid's life if you're interested in that. So it was okay. It's worth reading. And like I said, it was free on Gutenberg, so fits the. Uh, the, the thing, Oxbow Incident, I mentioned. Let's do some more visuals here. Mr. Finchley discovers his England, has a chapter on cricket, has some bicycling. Not really sport, a sport novel per se, but I've got others coming up that I'm going to read that I think will fit better. Then I read uh, three books by Brian Garfield. I thought I had seven westerns by Brian Garfield. And I've had them for quite a while. They're published by Open Road through Mysterious Press or Mysterious Press by Open Road. One way or the other. Brian Garfield is the author of many crime books. Most famously, um, Death Wish. And one other one that's really famous is not coming to mind right now. And he also wrote a bunch of westerns. Uh, and he wrote this book, which from the font I thought was a western. This is the first one I read. Now look at this look at this cover in black and white. Tell me what you think. This is a Vietnam War novel. It's um a very early novel by him. 
he was in the military. I don't know if he served in Vietnam or not. This is an adventure novel. I don't think I've ever in my life read a Vietnam adventure action adventure novel. I'm sure they were written at the time, but this isn't like, you know, the things they carried by Tim O'Brien or, or something like that. This is like a straight up, this is like a, a men on a mission uh, thing. It's kind of like the, uh, it's, it's uh, like, like, I don't know, the, the subplot, the, the uh, William Holden part of Bridge on the River Kwai, or it's like the Dirty Dozen, Guns of Navarro and that kind of thing. There's a bridge that was supposed to be taken out. Uh, they, they send a, a, a crack squad of bridge taker outers that the U.S. does to, to blow it up, and uh, they all get killed. So, And this is the story of the second mission that has to go in and try and complete the mission. And it, it's okay. It's fine. It, it moves fast. Characters aren't very distinguished or anything. Uh, you know, it kept me reading. Then the next thing I read by him, so that wasn't a Western. Uh, they, I don't, I guess they didn't know where else to categorize it among his works because it's not a crime book either. So they put that Western style font on the last bridge. You know, these look like uniform editions to me. There's the, you know, there's a bunch of them like that. The next one I read was called, I read three by Brian Garfield. The next one I read was called The Vanquished. You can see again the same kind of cover. Uh, three guys on horses. And this one. This is a true story based on someone called, of a group called, of a type of very interesting type of American character. Like uh, this guy's name is, um, I forgot already, uh, Crab. Uh, like Buster Crab, it's not Buster Crab. It's a true story. It's based on this this guy who was an American who was hired to go down to get a group of guys to go down and and protect some some pueblos after the Mexican uh, Revolution and uh, decides to take that opportunity to try and take over Mexico or a big chunk of it for himself. Doesn't go well. Kind of like William Walker, who comes who he was friends with William Walker. Some people might remember the movie Walker <clears throat> uh, with Ed Harris in the 80s, probably. Uh, another adventurer who went down to Nicaragua, tried to take it over. You know, various various people have, have tried to do this. Didn't William, didn't Aaron Burr try and do this at one point, go west and make his own country? And and uh, this, there's been a few guys who tried to go uh, west or south and make their own country. None succeeded. Um, it's okay, uh, novel two. It's it's got some good action in it, and it's a true story. So it was interesting in that respect. The forward and the afterward, which tells you know goes into the more of the history of it, was probably better. Again, the characters aren't that interesting. Here's an old cover of it. What it looked like, like when it came out. The vanquished. I guess they're vanquished because they lose. I don't know. Then the third. Then the one, two, sixth book I read uh, this week, and the third Brian Garfield novel was Tripwire. Uh, this is getting to be more like it. Uh, you know, I was starting to wondering if I was going to bother to read all these. This is a story of a Buffalo soldier, a Black American cavalry soldier, who right after uh, leaving the army, under, uh, kicked out unfairly. Cover, you know, these covers are really generic. This this is not, what do you, I don't even know if this, this model is black. He's certainly not dressed the way, you know, there's a big point in the novel about how the guy's, you know, he's still wearing his cavalry uniform. Starts out, there's a couple of Buffalo soldiers together. They, they take a job I gotta find this part here. This is interesting. I thought they take a job uh, from this gangster type guy to steal some gold. Things don't go well. The rest, most of the novel is about um, the main character's name is Boag, going after his former partners, trying to get the gold. Uh, there's actually a lot of tripwires in it later on. 
I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. I thought this was interesting. This is the dedication. Perhaps Handy McKay will understand why this is for Don Westlake. I think I understand why this is for Don Westlake because this is very much structured like a Parker novel. Donald Westlake, under the name Richard Stark, wrote the Parker uh, crime novels, uh, dark uh, crime novels, which are about a thief named Parker who who makes his living a, as a professional thief and you know these big heists the books are never really about the heist so they're about how the heists go wrong and how he has to get his money back or has to get revenge on and this is very much that same kind of story so i think that's why he said that anyway i think and i'm kind of reading them more or less in order of of, of which brian garfield wrote them he started writing very young I think that first one, The Last Bridge, I think was written when he was like 27 or something, just how the army. So he's getting better, so I'll try a couple more. I've got four more. We'll see how that goes. Um, that brings me on my 100 book challenge to one, two, three, four, five, 52 books. Totally done on my 100 book challenge. Only 48 more to go, and then I can buy a book. And I've cheated a couple times, and I'll discuss that in another video when, when I talk about the books I, I got to cheat. So what have I got coming up? I've got, on Tuesday, i got a tag, a tag to do. I'll do that tag video. I'm going to read uh, Silence of the Lands came in on, on uh, my library, my long-awaited library hold of Silence of the Lands. Probably read that next. I'm also reading, in Spanish, I'm reading... This is not so interesting, I know, but it is going to count when I finish it. Uh, a lot of times you can read books in Spanish that are a good trick. If you have a little bit of a foreign language and you want to start reading, is to go for, where in the world is it? Really, like... Uh, non-fiction, but, but things like, well, what I'm reading is, I can't find it here now. It's, why isn't it here? It should be right at the top, right? Did it get... Anyway, it would be really nice if I could show you the cover. I just don't get this. Sometimes I just don't get how these displays work. Uh, it's not red, it's not new, I'm in the middle of it, it should be at the top, here it is. How to... How to Win Friends and Influence People. This kind of book, like sort of a pop psychology book, or like a diet book, or an exercise book, or something like that, or really pretty easy to read in a foreign language if you have any, you know, they're trying, you know, it's not really quirky style or anything like that. So I am about 25% into that. That will be book number 53 on my read. What else am I doing this week? Science of the Lambs, that, and I'm going to read, I've got some more summer sport lined up. I've got three or four more Brian Garfield books to read as Westerns. I'm also have got Writers of the Purple Sage to read. I'm planning on reading a couple other backups if 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 I still feel like doing Westerns after that. I wish I had a wider a, a variety of Westerns to read, but I am trying to pretty much keep to my no purchasing rule. And then I will start some Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek and Sport have all summer four, so that's why I've been hitting... Uh, uh, Westerns first. I know there's a sci-fi SF series FF, SF challenge coming in July. I don't have that much science fiction left on my Kindle uh, probably because you know everything I've had in science fiction I, I usually read it right, right away or I don't have it. And I also want to read, I also picked out my science book, my side mission science book for Star Trek, Summer of Trek, Wrath of Trek, Con Trek. 
so I'll get to that sometime. Maybe, who knows, maybe I'll even get back to what I originally started this year doing, which was reading The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Gibbon. We'll see. Stay tuned. Thank you.